feeling it to heal it, right? So like experiencing the the emotion moving into into that, I, I think is really relevant because uh, the question that I want to highlight from uh, Roger is there's this balance that he, he talked about. Like, um, could you speak to the balance of learning emotions, emotional expression with emotional control for younger children? Maybe you can um, speak to that. Because on one side, we're saying we want you to have really great emotional control. And on the other side, it's like, no, we want you to like feel and experience these emotions. What is the balance between these two? Um, it's a great question, Roger. Well, what do you think? Uh, well, as far as emotional um, control goes, I don't know about that because I still haven't been able to, you know, control all of my emotions. But you know, it goes back to our first um, question. So first, I just say feel it to heal it. And so the one thing that I found in in my life is that I didn't treat emotional pain the same way that I did physical pain. So an example of that is this: if I'm playing basketball and I twist my ankle, right? The right thing to do is to get it checked out, is to rehab it, sit on the bench, don't play on the ankle, let the ankle heal. And so the same thing goes when we experience emotional pain. Sometimes that pain is so great that if we you know, don't meet it head on and we get the therapy we need, we take the time we need, we let time, you know, time heals, we talk about what's happening, if we, um, if someone has hurt us, then we can seek some restorative justice, right? Well, for for me, I had to learn that feelings precede emotions, mm, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. First <laughs> is the emotion, then is the feeling, then there's either the reaction or the response. And so when I was younger, even as an adult, I was reacting to my emotions and my feelings. And even now that I'm a lot better, I still have days, you know, but, but, but now I know how to regroup and get myself back on track, right? And, you know, it's more, it's more difficult when our rights, our civil rights are violated. When we, when, when, when we are being, um, you know, underrepresented, marginalized, when, you know, when we see our own people being treated, um, mistreated, that's very difficult to do. And, and so I don't think that anyone can tell anyone how to feel, right? Mm -hmm. But I know that for me, I have found that I'm a lot better when I'm emotionally in, in control or in better control. And so sometimes I'll be honest, just like last week, there was a lot in the news that was just too emotional. You know, Twitter, it was yeah. too much to handle. And I couldn't be in the right frame of mind. I had to cancel a class and be like, look guys, we just can't do it today. Like it's just not, you know, something. But I think that, you know, young people as well as adults need to know what their, um, what they can or, or cannot handle when they know when they need that, you know, emotional rest or break. But at the same time, I think we have to work on it so that we can be better um, unprepared to help our young people with this because it doesn't go away. You know, it's not going away. Like, I think yeah. that we can start over with a whole different um, country, civilization, language, but emotions are still going to be there. So okay. So how how did you know this? Like so you're you're describing the situation of last week. You totally knew that you couldn't run this class. Like at what point do you go like it's above the threshold, right? Like and I I am not able to to like to know uh, and I, I'm able to know that truly like I need that time. I need time away. I need to be doing something different. Uh, I'd love to yeah. hear your thoughts. About how do you know? How do you get to that point? when my anxiety level starts to you know go up and i feel like my heart is pounding and i'm not able to you know quickly regroup now there is a there is a trick that i use um and it's the, dr wayne dyer talks a lot or you know in his work he talks about meditation and so breathing is a big part of that 
And so if you take three simple breaths, it stops. See, by focusing on breathing, you can no longer focus on your thinking, right? And so that's like a pattern interrupt. And so um, typically that's what I do. But when I can't just do that, right? And I, you know, know that I'm upset or that I'm anxious or that um, then I know that I need to, to um, take a break because I don't want to say or do anything that's not going to be constructive. I think we're either building or we just, or we are destroying. And so I never want to be in a position where I'm not saying the right things to my, to my students or other people. And so, yeah, I take a break. Um, there's times you wow. have to get on social media. I mean, it's important, man. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I love have, this, like, um, you've got this, I, this notion of, um, emotions, like there, there's a physiological component to it right like emotion yeah. there is a, a movement of our body in, in doing it it's a heart rate oh. that's increased it is it is it is something else and i think that that to me is key like if you notice your heart rate is going up you notice your like emotional level is like way up there um you've got way more anxiety you're shorter with people like this is a good indication like you got to get this under control like you you maybe need that time meditation you might need that time for like rest if you're not having enough sleep. And and that's another thing as well. It's like, oh man, like I don't know what um this time has done yeah. for sleep patterns, but it's been insane. <laughs> oh yeah, no, you know, like yeah, I don't sleep anymore. Um no, but I'll say this though. When I can't when it's very difficult for me to empathize with someone, then I know I have to love them at a distance. What is, what do you mean by that? What, what what's like love them at a distance? Tell me. Well, I think that, um, you know, as a person of faith, we have to love um, people. We don't love all that they do, obviously, but, but we have to love them. And so, you know, having empathy is to see it from someone else's um, point of view. Well, if your point of view is killing me and damaging me, then I just have to love you at a distance. Um, it, you know, that's just how you know, I, I prefer to go. Um, you just can't be in every situation. It just doesn't work that way. Um, in my opinion. And so when any time I, you know, I take time, if I don't know about something, I learn about the history of it. You know, I, I learn about what I need to know. And if I just can't, then I just can't. So that's how I try to be. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's, that's a key, a key point there is, Sometimes we we need to know when do we react and when do we step away. And I think that having that type of emotional self-control is just so important, you know, having that, that type of regulation. And yeah, you're right. You do want to feel it. Uh, and it's just being able to recognize our own emotions to the point where we know that if I start reacting or if I go into the live situation with this, I'm going to be running in way hot. <laughs> I'm going to be run, like, I'm going to be reacting negatively. I'm going to be like, really like angry with people. It's like, Hey, I can I like drop, hey, can yeah, I drop something in the chat? Is there a way for me to drop something in the chat? Yeah, absolutely. Is there something you wanted me to highlight? Yeah. Well, th there's an article I wrote on three ways that educators can better manage their emotions. Yeah. And See if you can, like, you should be able to pop stuff in and it should uh, appear in all the different platforms. <laughs> Okay, so let me see. For some reason, it's not a lot. So it says I can private chat. Okay, so look. Oh, I'm okay, send private chat to me, and then I'll then I'll send it. <laughs> yeah, and so that. Oh, sweet. Yeah, those steps are are pretty much universal, and yeah, you know, parents can also work on those too. Okay, and there's a lot more um, to all of that, but you know, in blogs, we, you know, typically do nine hundred to a thousand words, but there's also work by Dr. James um, Gross out of Stanford. And so he's an emotions researcher and his work, um, he has process model for emotion regulation. And so his work helped me because sometimes you can change what you respond to emotionally because feelings come after the emotions. And so you can decide to, you know, give that thing importance or not give it importance. And so, you know, one of the things that I used to emotionally respond 
negatively to is when my friends would not support me or would not be um, happy for me if something was going my, my way. And so I had to learn how to change my response to that emotion. And now I just realized that that's not really about me at all. That's really more about them more than me. Okay, wait, more- so, so this link, um, and I appreciate you mentioning that because like, this is a good example. So you, you, the link you had was three steps to better manage emotions. Um, yeah. And uh, like, I will k- leave a link and I apologize for those. I can't leave a link right now, but um, you, you will get it at least after this chat. I'll copy everything. But I, I guess my question is, what are those three steps? What are the three steps that better ha- help manage our emotions? Yeah, so we've been talking about it the whole time is to know what emotions are and their effect on the body and on you as a person, on, on your decisions. Know that um, feelings come after the emotion, right? And then second is what psychologists say the first step should be is to label and to recognize. And then third is to regulate. And so Dr. James um, Gross's work is in there. There's a video in there and his model. And that's actually what I teach in my SEL masterclass as the first step for educators before they even do this with the kids, right? Because you can't be the lead learner on this one. And so, but even with that said though, I'm not perfect and we can't expect anyone else to be perfect. And so when we learn about these things and we're doing better, sometimes because you know, things are habit, right? <clears throat> we might fall back into the same pattern of reactions. But as long as we catch ourselves, then that's a step in the right direction. And it takes time, you know? So we need to, um, you know, try not to judge ourselves or others that, that, that we're working with. You know, lead with love, lead with grace, and just do the best that that we can do. Like we're living in a very difficult time right now. It's very difficult. Yeah. I mean, we were just biting our nails after seeing a video of proof to to find out if someone was guilty or not. That type of time, that's the type of time that we live in. So we can just do the best that we can, take care of ourselves, our families, our students, our children, and do it for the right reasons. Exactly. And, and, and that's a really great uh, point that I wanted to, to emphasize because you, you teach a course specifically about this. Um, and I, I wanted to give some opportunity to, 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 to plug both the course, your training, and uh, the, the SEL in action guide. But before that, yeah. we've got a question um, that I wanted to, to see if I can highlight. I don't cool. know if it'll all fit in here. Uh, give me a sec. So he asks, um, Roger asks, the emotional expression and meditation uh, exhibits itself differently in body movements when uh, when we practice yoga, kung fu, and prayer. Uh, can you speak to how movement connects to emotions uh, more given these various practices? Yeah, so I know that, that, yeah, I know that that happens a lot in Tai Chi, in yoga, um, and even in prayer. Um, for, for me, it's more of a focus on, on, on my breathing and clearing my mind. And so one practice that, um, I try to do after doing something where I do some heavy mental lifting, like my writing or, or workshop or, um, even physical activity, like a workout is to take five minutes to just, you know, clear my head you know, focus on, on, on my breathing and just allow for there to pattern interrupt between thinking and, and breathing. Right. Um, another strategy that I, that I've been working on is you do 90 minutes of work and then you take 20 minute break to do that. Right. And to do something like a Pomodoro type of effect then. Yeah. Yeah. And so one of the ways that I have found that has helped me is laughter. And so I'm a big Martin Lawrence fan. And so the Martin show, um, I'm Golden Girls. Um, I love it. I find shows that make me laugh. And I find that that is a big stressor. So yeah, I know that different um, cultures have different things. Um, 
but for me, you know, I'm American. So, <laughs> so I tend to go to the things that I like. And when you like something, when you do something you like to do, like for me is comedy, right? To, you know, watch a comedy show, then you feel happy inside because you're doing something that you love. And I think that's really the first step to any type of internal peace. Yeah, laughter is the best medicine um, <laughs> when it comes to like, you know, just I think we take ourselves too seriously sometimes. We're like, oh, man, I've got to do this and I, I've got to have this accomplished. And it's like, ah, does it really matter in the end? Like, it's just it's more like laughter forces us to reflect. It forces us to think like, you know what, maybe it wasn't that big a deal. <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny, like when I tell the story afterwards. And that kind of storytelling, like you get so many good things built in when you've got laughter there. And so I am so glad that you mentioned that. 